Now we're going to cover Section 2 of Basic Vehicle Operations. The objectives in Section 2 include pre-starting inspection, the engine start sequence, how the operator should operate the vehicle when leaving the station, how you should arrive on scene, issues when returning to quarters, some items to make sure that are completed when you're back at the station, and ensuring that the apparatus is ready for the next alarm. Before you start the engine, it's always a good practice to make sure you complete a 360 walk around of the apparatus. This makes sure that all compartment doors are closed, all hose is secured in the beds, and all cab doors are closed. Also, make sure that all shore lines are disconnected. Remember, there is both an air line and an electric line for shoreline to the apparatus. When you are ready to enter the apparatus cab, first disconnect both the electric line and the air shore line from the cab. Next, before you enter the vehicle cab, turn the battery master switch to on. Once you're seated in the seat, it's now time to turn on the ignition switch. When you turn on the ignition switch, you'll hear an audible alarm, and you'll also notice that the gauges will go to their maximum indication and then return back to zero. Do not start the engine until all gauges have completely reset and back to zero. Once this is done, push the start button and allow the engine to start. Go first turn on the main master switch underneath the driver's seat. Then turn the ignition switch to the on position and allow the truck to synchronize its gauges. Then press the start button, starting the vehicle. Before you leave the station, remember it is the equipment operator's responsibility to verify that all occupants on the apparatus are seated and their seat belts are on. Next, check out the front windshield and verify the apparatus bay door is completely open. And last, before you start to move the vehicle, take one last check of the mirrors down both sides of the apparatus and make sure there are no open compartment doors or other things that might strike the station on the way out the door. Once you've completed your 360 walk around and have the vehicle started, it's now time to leave the station. Remember that it is not necessary for you to leave the station at a high rate of speed. Usually a slight acceleration on the gas pedal will allow the vehicle to start to roll and moving slowly out the station is all that's required. It's also important to remember that if you have something happen, like if the garage door starts to come down or something like that, you will be able to stop the apparatus quickly and avoid a collision with the station. As you're pulling out, remember, do not have your finger on the garage door opener and accidentally close the door on the apparatus. Make sure that the apparatus is completely clear of the station, then close the apparatus bay door. It's important also to remember that once you are clear of the bay door, not only close your apparatus bay door, but to make sure that the station is secured prior to leaving on a call. Once you have all this done and the station is secured, activate your warning equipment if you're going on an emergency run and then respond to the incident. During the response, because of the height and width and length of Ladder 54, there are some additional concerns that you need to keep in mind. Because of the basket and the ladder on top of the vehicle, it is more likely that you may strike something such as a low-hanging tree, power line, or other types of obstructions with the apparatus. All of the occupants riding in the apparatus should be vigilant for these types of obstructions and assist the driver making sure that there are no collisions. Also, because of the length of the apparatus both in front of the front wheels and behind the rear wheels, this apparatus is going to have some additional clearance issues that will need to be navigated slowly. Because of the weight of the apparatus, it's important to remember that Ladder 54 is the heaviest apparatus in the district. And as the equipment operator, you will need to allow for longer braking distances and greater distances following other vehicles. Make sure that you plan your route and know where there are problems with being able to maneuver Ladder 54 in areas of your district. Also remember that when you're making turns, especially right-hand turns, that some additional clearance will be needed and that the driver will need to plan ahead prior to starting the corner. Once you arrive on scene, we need to once again talk about arrival and vehicle positioning. If you're the initial arriving ladder or aerial apparatus, on most incidents, 
the apparatus should be positioned in front of the building on the A side. However, if you are a second or third do aerial apparatus, listen to instructions from command. They may only stage you for the, your initial arrival, or they may direct you to an alternate side of the building besides side A. The other issue that we talked about earlier was how do you position the vehicle as it relates to how tall the building is? The rule of thumb here is that when you have a building that is less than five stories, it will allow the vehicle to be positioned farther away from the building, and in some cases even outside of first due apparatus such as engines, tankers, or rescues. However, when you have a building that is five stories tall or taller, it's important to have the aerial apparatus parked as close to the building as possible to get maximum use of the reach of the ladder. Once the call is completed and it's time to return to quarters, once again make sure that you perform a 360 walk around of the apparatus. Pay special attention that the outriggers are secured, that all jack plates are picked up and blocks are picked up and stored in their appropriate locations, that the rescue basket is returned to its down position, and anything else that could cause damage to the apparatus on the road. It's important to make sure that even things like ladder racks and outriggers are all where they're supposed to be prior to leaving the scene. And when you return to quarters before the vehicle moves, once again remember, it is the driver's responsibility to ensure that all personnel riding on the apparatus are seated with their seat belts fastened. When you return to the station, make sure that once again the bay door is completely open before backing in. Once again, back in slow, allowing for time to stop should something go wrong. Make sure that the parking brake is set. Make sure the transmission is returned to the neutral position and the battery master switch is turned off. And also ensure that both shorelines for electric and air are connected back to the truck. Before you leave the station, it's important to make sure that the apparatus is ready for the next alarm. And as the apparatus operator, you will need to verify that the water tank is full, all SCBA packs and bottles are full, that all equipment has been refueled that was used on the incident, that the cascade system has been reserviced and is full of air, that medical bags have stocked, O2 cylinders have been refilled, and the apparatus fuel tank is filled as necessary. So in summary of section two, we've covered the pre-start sequence and the pre-starting inspection of the apparatus. We've talked about how to start the apparatus engine, some concerns when leaving the station, the procedures for what the first do and second or third do aerial apparatus assignments may be when arriving on scene, concerns that you may have during your returns to quarters, procedures to follow when the apparatus returns to the station, and items to be checked to make sure the apparatus is ready for the next alarm. At this point, we've started to give you some basic understanding of the operation of this apparatus as it relates to overall safety. Always follow the same procedures. Make sure that walk-arounds are completed prior to departure, making sure that everyone is seated with seat belts fastened and that the equipment operator as well as other personnel on the vehicle are cognizant of vehicle positioning and where they need to be when they arrive on scene. Remember that your safety and the safety of everyone on the apparatus starts from the time that you leave the station until the apparatus is safely back in quarters.